How to show your dog where he is in the pack. Developing a strong and lasting bond with your dog involves having a clear and mutual understanding of how you and he relate to each other. A common training approach has been to teach dog owners to be alpha over their dogs and interpret certain dog behaviors e.g., pulling on leash, jumping up on the couch, as challenges to the alpha role. However, showing your dog where he is in the pack is not really about establishing your dominance, think of it as teaching your dog to be a well, mannered part of the pack. Part 1. Teaching Your Dog Good Manners 1. Train Your Dog Training your dog is the best way to teach him good manners. When your dog is well trained, he will understand how he should to relate to you and other household members, his pack. You can train your dog to do many things, such as sit, stay, and come when called. Other forms of training include leash training and crate training. Keep in mind that training your dog is not about showing him that you are dominant to him in the pack. In fact, interacting with your dog from a position of dominance could actually weaken your bond with him and increase his stress and anxiety. Obedience classes are a great way to train your dog. Training your dog will require your time and patience. It may take anywhere from a few days to a few weeks to train him. 2. Create Rules of Good Behavior for Your Dog in addition to formal training, creating a clear set of rules for your dog will help him understand how he should relate to his pack. The rules you set are up to you and should reflect how you want your dog to behave in your home. For example, you can establish a rule that your dog cannot sit on the furniture. You can also set rules about where your dog can sleep, on the floor rather than on your bed, and how he should wait to be fed, sitting instead of jumping up and down. As with formal training, these rules will teach your dog how to be a well-behaved member of the pack. The better your dog understands the rules of the house, the less anxious he will be, and the less likely he will develop behavior problems. 3. Reinforce the rules using positive reinforcement Reinforcing the rules is key to helping your dog understand how he is supposed to behave. Positive reinforcement, e.g., verbal praise, treats, extra playtime, is an effective way to reinforce the rules by rewarding only good behavior. Your dog will recognize that good behavior brings rewards, and will thus perform the behaviors for which he will be rewarded. Positive reinforcement should be immediate when your dog performs the desired behavior, e.g., sitting before he eats. Immediate reinforcement will help your dog establish an association between good behavior and reward. Positive reinforcement should also be consistent. The more consistent the reward, the better your dog will understand how to behave. 4. Correct Bad Behavior Rewarding your dog for following the rules is one side of the coin, making the breaking of the rules undesirable is the other side. One way to create an undesirable consequence is to ignore your dog when he misbehaves. Because your dog does not want to be ignored, he will choose to follow the rules and get your attention, rather than break the rules and risk being ignored. Deterrent devices, such as upside, down mousetraps, and motion, activated bottles of compressed air, are available that will discourage the bad behavior without hurting your dog. A firm no is often effective. Do not reinforce the rules through physical or verbal abuse. This will likely instill fear in your dog, rather than teach him good behavior. 5. Be consistent when teaching your dog good manners. Consistency is key to teaching your dog how to behave properly. For example, when training your dog to follow basic commands, reward him each time he responds correctly. Likewise, correct his bad behavior each time he misbehaves. Consistency also involves giving the same cue for a command. For example, if you say down on one occasion when you want dog off the couch, then say off another time, he will be confused about which command to follow. 
Make sure that you and other household members train and correct your dog in the same way. Each person should say the same commands and reinforce the rules in the same way. Without consistency, your dog will be confused as to when his behavior is desirable and when it is not. Part 2 Creating a Supportive Pack Environment for Your Dog 1. Take your dog with you. Your dog should feel like he is loved and supported by the members of his pack. One way to show him this support is to take him with you when you go places. For example, let him ride in the car with you when you run errands. If practical, let him travel with you when you go on a trip. Your dog wants to spend time with his pack, so involving him in your life activities will make him feel welcome. 2. Exercise Your Dog On any given day, your dog probably has some pent, up energy that he needs to release. Exercising not only lets him release that energy, but it can also be a time for you to bond with him. For example, play fetch with your dog, it's an easy game that can keep him happily entertained with his interaction with you. Walking or running with your dog is a great way to exercise your dog. If you have a working dog, like a husky, foster his love of work, e.g., pulling you in a wheelbarrow. Choosing exercises that allow interaction between you and your dog will make him feel like he's a part of the pack. 3. Involve each family member in your dog's activities. Making your dog feel welcome in the pack should be a family affair. If it helps, create a schedule for each each family member to take care of your dog's needs, e.g. walking, grooming, feeding. When everyone participates in your dog's care, he will feel supported by his pack. Training should also be a family affair. When everyone knows how your dog is being trained and is consistent with giving commands and reinforcing the rules, your dog will likely feel comfortable and confident in his pack. 4. Show your dog affection appropriately. Showing your dog affection is a good way for him to feel supported by his pack. However, indiscriminate affection will overindulge your dog and will not help him understand how to be a good member of the pack. Show affection only when your dog is behaving properly, e.g. sitting before eating. Part 3 Learning the Misconceptions About Dominance 1. Learn why dominance-based training is not effective in dogs. Dominance-based training uses the premise that a dog is trying to assume a leadership position over his owner, thus requiring the owner to show his or her dog who is in charge. However, dogs generally do not try to assert their leadership or take charge. Therefore, trying to show your dog that he is lower than you in the pack is not only ineffective, but could create an adversarial relationship between you and him. Because your dog is not trying to compete with you, the concept of dominance is not considered to be relevant to living and working with dogs. 2. Do not equate leash pulling with dominant behavior. Although leash pulling is undesirable, it is not an assertion of dominance. In fact, how your dog walks on a leash is rarely a reflection of your relationship to him. More than likely, the leash pulling is indicative of him not knowing how to walk properly on a leash. Proper leash training should effectively address this bad behavior. 3. Avoid interpreting improper urination as dominant behavior. Unless you have an unknittered male dog who urinates to mark territory, Improper urination is usually a sign of inadequate house training or urinary system disease. If you have already house trained your dog, but he continues to urinate in the house, take him to your veterinarian for a medical examination. If your veterinarian rules out disease as the underlying cause of your dog's inappropriate urination, you may need to house train him again. You may also need to be more attuned to his cues that he needs to relieve himself. Taking him outside and rewarding him immediately after he relieves himself will reinforce this good behavior. 4. Do not assume your dog is barking to show he is in charge. 
Barking is commonly misinterpreted as your dog trying to assert his dominance. Rather, he may be barking out of boredom, fear, or anxiety. If your dog is barking because he is bored, you can train him to bark only on command. Fear or anxiety-based barking may be more challenging to address. Your dog may have developed a genuine fear of someone or a particular situation and may bark to signal his distress. Consider seeking the expertise of a veterinary behaviorist if your dog barks out of fear or anxiety. 5. Do not associate your dog's eating behavior with dominance. If your dog is trying to eat before you, he is not trying to show that he is in control of your kitchen. Instead, he may just be scavenging, a natural dog behavior. If your dog sees food, regardless of whether it is on your plate or on the countertop, he will probably try to eat it. You can discourage this scavenging behavior by keeping him out of the kitchen while you are preparing food. You could also train him to sit while you eat or prepare food. Keep in mind that your dog does not see himself as submissive to you if you make him wait to eat until after you finish. In doing this, you are teaching him good eating behavior not that you are above him in the pack. 6. Learn about other behaviors not considered dominant. Dog behaviors such as running through a doorway ahead of you, ignoring your command to come when called, and jumping up are sometimes interpreted as assertions of dominance. Although undesirable, these behaviors are not challenges to your leadership. Rather, they can indicate playfulness, natural canine behavior, or a lack of training. The website https apt.com, pet, owners, choosing, a, trainer, dominance, has a comprehensive list of behaviors that are commonly misinterpreted as dominant. Becoming familiar with this list will help you understand your dog's behavior, as well as learn how to correct the behavior. Tips Your relationship with your dog will be much more fulfilling if you do not rely on showing him who's boss. It may be helpful to look at your dog as just another member of your pack, rather than lower than you in the pack. The concept of the alpha wolf is not applicable to explaining dog behavior. Interestingly, studies have shown that the social hierarchy in a pack of wolves does not rely on aggression or challenges to leadership.